Hi everyone, welcome back to day four, it is now, of my daily whiskey calendar. And of course I have my That Petite Whiskey Company calendar here, so we are going to open a new one. But before we do, I had a brilliant comment, so thank you Bill for submitting this comment on one of my, I think it was the first video. It's always good to hear what you guys want to see and if you have any ways of improvement or information that you feel like you're missing out on. So I think, so I'm just going to go through the three ones that we've tried so far, just give the prices on them I think and um, if I would buy them, kind of what my thoughts are now in retrospect. So day one we had the 25 year old Space Side, the mystery one, they kinda, it's called Space Side number two I think and that retails at around £120. Personally, in my opinion, I think it was slightly more bitter than I would have wished on the palate, even though it had a lovely flavour and a lovely nose. I just don't think it would be... I wouldn't buy it for that price. I think there's other things... Bitterness is one of those things that I struggle with a little bit sometimes. I would rather have a sweet whiskey than a bitter whiskey, but that's just my personal preference. Day two, we had the Macduff, and I also forgot to say that Macduff is the word for the distillery, kind of, that you tend to see with independent bottlers. Uh, in your general release, which I still don't see that often, is the Deveron or Glen Deveron. And yesterday, we had, I think the Macduff is sold out, which is why I'm not going to say it much more about that, but the yesterday, the James E. Pepper, which I really, really liked, retails at £47, I think, and I would buy that. I've actually been close, like it's in my basket at the moment, I'm, I'm very tempted because that was definitely something up my street. But moving on, now we're going to see if we can find day four. Can I find day four? Hmm. Uh, yes, it's up here. Let's see. That works really well. Here we go. And what is this? Ooh, this is the Langatun. It's a five year old, it's a Swiss whiskey, and this is the batch three, bottled at 51.2% ABV. This is actually one I have tried before, uh, and from memory, it was very nice. So let's have a little sip again. I tried this in a, a lineup of other international whiskies, so I can't remember the details for this, but I have a feeling this was some quirky cask or just some detail. I'll have to fill you in on that one tomorrow. I'll probably just chat about them like this, a little short, cute tasting, and then I'll look up the retail price afterwards and I'll give you a recap tomorrow. See, well, if you have anything else to see on it, really. I wonder if this was my favourite one out of the tasting last time. On the nose, it's a little bit like wheat meets oats. A bit powdery. A bit like an Austrian cafe. I know it's Swiss, <laughs> but the Austrian cafe is that kind of dust, mountain, woody grain vibe. I don't know how to explain it. There's something about it that has this malty note, but also a really fresh note and quite sweet. It's almost a bit like uh, an oats, not, I, I'm not going to say oat cakes, because here in Scotland those oat cakes are like the driest thing you'll ever find. It's like cardboard. I know a lot of people like them, especially with whiskey tastings, because they don't taste like much. <laughs> but I, I struggle a bit with oat cakes. But there's like oats, like pastry cakes, like oat cookies. That's a bit what it reminds me of. Or almost like a, a sponge cake, but it definitely has like a really unique note to it. I'm struggling to pinpoint. It's somewhere between like a nuttiness, a grassiness, a candy note, baked goods. Hmm. Let's have a little taste. Sanjava. Mm, I do think this is a yummy whiskey. It's the same. It has like a, a weird element to it, but 
a weirdness I love. It's a, I, I think if you like a fresh and sweet whiskey with a bit of a weirdness, you would like this one. It is quite sweet, definitely. Very fresh. And then it has something. Like in the sweetness, it has a spice. But it's like a, a sweet spice. So it's like. Maybe it's that kind of. I've spoken about this before, but sometimes in the mornings when I want, you can make, uh, you can just fry bananas in a pan and you can put some coconut sugar and cinnamon on it. And that kind of mixture of the little spice and the, the sugar makes it really nice. On the nose, there's something there. I want, it makes me think of a, a mazarin. It's called in Swedish. It's a little pastry that you make with the uh, almond paste. Quite chewy, like quite thick in the consistency. I mean, this definitely a whiskey I really like. I'll, I'll be enjoying this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you tried the Langatun? this five-year-old. Have you tried any other Swiss whiskey? I think this is the only Swiss whiskey I've ever tried. The only Swiss whiskey. I couldn't resist saying that. But I have such a soft spot for Switzerland because I did my winter season in Barbier and I just... I, I really miss it. <laughs> so I would love to explore more Swiss whiskey. So if you have any recommendations for me, please put them in the comments here below. And of course, if you're tasting along, let me know what Christmas drams or Christmas calendars that you're sipping along with. Um, but yeah, I hope you'll join us tomorrow again. Until then, I hope you'll have a lovely day. Slanjava, skål. And I hope you'll have a nice Christmas when it comes to it.